Hi everyone. Today I'm just going to be talking a little bit about bismuth and the many amazing properties that it has. Now this is a regular spoon, but this is a chunk of bismuth that I got in the mail and, well, ended up melting it on the stove and making this just, I guess, disc of bismuth. You can see that you have these sort of different colors from inside out, or outside in, depending on which way you want to look at it. And it's because bismuth, when it oxidizes, it oxidizes a certain color depending on the temperature at which it oxidizes. So you can see that it oxidized from the outside in, cooler to hotter. Eh, just a neat little thing. Now, a user on YouTube asked me to talk a little bit about the strength of bismuth. And you can kind of hear it. It's falling apart in my hand. It's a very dense, dense metal. Um, squeezing it, it doesn't really crack. Um, but if I... You can kind of hear it. It's kind of cracking. If I just... Uh, it's kind of cracking. And uh, it's cutting my hand. But it's not cracking too bad. However, it's very weak. Uh, earlier, here's a, a second disc I made. Um... I actually took a hammer and just tapped it, and it cracked in half. Um, it's it's very beautiful. It makes very, very beautiful crystals, and the crystals don't fall apart because they're... Huh, they do fall apart. I'm a liar. Now, just to show you, regular hammer, regular bismuth. Now, let's actually flip this around to show you. This may just ha might just have to do with the structure of this, you know, being a bit more solid. It's not rounded on the top. It's got a round on the bottom, so when I hit it, it disperses this evenly. It doesn't have to go on the brittle edges, because the edges, the way it formed, the edges are a bit more brittle than the inside. The inside's the most dense part. So if I hit it on the middle, it'll probably, uh, probably be fine. But if I hit it on the outside, like I did this one, it'll probably shatter. So just a real quick, yeah. Let's try it again. Okay. That's two solid strikes, and it's sticking up. It's sticking up pretty well. It's four, and the the top the the slag on the top is falling off, but this part is it. Now, if I flip it over, where it's kind of rounded, and it can disperse the force, it might crack it. In fact, actually, you might be able to see it's starting to crack. Oh, there it is. It's starting to crack. Now, if I flip it over and hit on the crack, it'll split. See? I'm not a liar. I told you it would split. Yep. See, it split just like this. Now, while bismuth is very weak, uh, it, it's very brittle, uh, it can still be used in, in many applications. It's pretty expensive, uh, but you could make a de something decorative out of it, but bismuth really doesn't have much use. Now, this is a lofty, kind of a heavy piece. I... Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, this is about 100 grams. About. Let's see if this entire piece is 100 grams. No. About 130. Uh, it's about a hundred grams, and this is, it, it's definitely dense. It, it doesn't feel like a 100 gram metal. Uh, it really doesn't feel like that. It's very dense, uh, and if you make it really thick, I, you know, see, even though I hit the hammer, even though I hit it in the middle, it's not really breaking out to these outside parts. Eh, it kind of is. It's just more structurally stable. Hold on, let's... Give it one more good whack. There we go. Nice hairline fractures. There we go. Now, again, it's it's. This is just the second piece. When thin, you can mold it very well. While the metal is very thin, it's easily malleable. However, it's very brittle, and you do need to be careful with it. A uh, thing to remember with it is bismuth is about 20 to $25 a pound, meaning that if you make anything decorative out of it, it will likely be very ineffective to use pure bismuth for the entire object. Uh, let's say you were trying to make something as large as a plate or a bowl. 
uh, it would be very ineffective because it's very expensive. One thing you could try to do is make an alloy with bismuth sitting on top of some cheaper metal like aluminum. What you would want to do is try and find a metal with a low enough melting point like bismuth has where they would fuse together readily. Uh, looking it up online, some may be cadmium, lead, tin, or indium. Now what you may want to do is find a metal that bismuth will sit happily upon the surface. Just, again, for decoration. Hopefully this helps. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe for more. I will be showing you how to make bismuth crystals at home. I know there are hundreds of those videos out there, but one more can't hurt. Until next time, thank you for watching.